welcome to Capitol Hill. I'm Lyndall Curtis. One more week to go. Three more question times until Parliament is scheduled to rise for the last time before the election. The dying days of the 45th, 43rd Parliament may or may not produce a final act in the saga of the Labor leadership. Nobody really knows. The tensions are out in the open. Senior ministers are expressing their support for the Prime Minister and calling on Kevin Rudd to make a decision. One backbencher says there should be a ballot. In the midst of this all, the Prime Minister says the caucus settled the matter in March. She has economic pessimism in her sights, decrying the talking down of the economy. Joining me to discuss the day are Liberal frontbencher Matthias Cormann and Labor MP Ed Husick. Welcome to you both. Good morning. Yeah. We'll start with the economy and the Prime Minister says there are glaring misstatements about the health of the economy and irresponsibility from those suggesting there may be a recession. Irrational threats to confidence are a threat to jobs and growth. Of course there will always be legitimate debate about the policies to best guide Australia's economic future. But what there should not be is irrational assessments that are designed to smash confidence and to mislead the Australian people. Matthias, on any of the usual measures, economic growth, unemployment, inflation and interest rates, the economy is doing well, isn't it? Uh, the economy under Julia Gillard is uh, heading in the wrong direction. There's no two ways about it. I mean, the government in its budget uh, talked about a plan for growth and jobs and, of course, they're planning uh, for the economy to grow more slowly and for unemployment to go up. But the, reason but the economy is still growing. The last set of unemployment figures showed employment still growing. Interest rates are at historic lows and inflation is still contained, isn't well, it? Well, the economy is not in as strong a position as, is, as it could have been and as it should have been. Uh, it is true that the current government inherited a very strong position. It is true that we have benefited from the best terms of trade in 140 years, courtesy of our exposure uh, principally uh, to China and other parts of Asia. The truth of the matter is, though, that in the last uh, six years, uh, the Labor government has continued to add more and more lead to our saddleback, the carbon tax, the mining tax, 30-odd uh, new or increased taxes, 21,000 new pieces of regulations. The cost of doing business is going up. Our international competitiveness uh, is going down. We but need it's not to correct economic growth backwards. The economy is still well, growing. Well, our, our economy is now growing more slowly than it, than it, than it did in the past and than it could. Unemployment uh, is starting to rise. Uh, it was at record uh, lows when we were in government. And of course, what we're concerned about uh, is the trend. And uh, we, of course, need a change of government so that we can reverse that trend, so we can actually focus uh, on uh, maximising our opportunities for our economy uh, moving forward. Ed, the Prime Minister was talking about perceptions today. Perceptions count, don't they? And, and what people are seeing, while jobs are still being created, they are being cut in other areas. Uh, Part-time employment is growing faster than full-time employment, and economic growth is still patchy, isn't it? Well, I think, look, I agree with you that perceptions do count. I think that goes to the heart of, of what you were just asking uh, in the question. It goes to the heart of uh, what the Prime Minister was hitting at today, that those perceptions are being shaped uh, inaccurately by, you know, claims that, you know, for example, we just had, you know, the, the usual lines that are run by the Liberal Party uh, in relation to the state of the economy. One of the good indicators of where the economy is going, investment. Um, you know, it's at, as a share of GDP, 50-year highs, as the, the PM said today, 17.5 per cent. Um, if uh, we had an economy that was going, was, uh, was going the way that was just indicated, you wouldn't have people willing to put their money where their mouth was and make those investments for the years ahead. Um, if we also had a situation where, in some parts of Europe, the unemployment's hitting 20 per cent, and imagine the political discourse here if that was the case. The fact of the matter is we're doing very well. Um, the other fact of the matter is we're doing well in circumstances where the rest of the economy was going diabolically. I mean, we have never get any reference to the fact that we had economic conditions there worst in 75 years and worse since the Depression. And so in, that, uh, in the face of all that, Lindell, I think it's worthwhile getting the facts in play because a failure to have, you know, a, a failure to uphold confidence um, the, the fact that the other side of politics wants to dent it, that they uh, do want to smash it, uh, means that it does have a, an impact on whether or not people will do certain things within the economy, which is bad for us all. So that's why it's important they get the facts on the table. Matthias, given, given the patchy nature of the Australian economy, uh, the, the peak in the mining investment boom 
passing. If you win government come September, will you still be talking the economy down or will you be talking about the strengths that are there? I totally reject the assertion that we're talking the economy down. What we're saying is that we're not in as strong a position as we could have been and as we should have been. And of course, should we be successful uh, in September, what we'll do uh, is we'll make sure that we'll be a government that lives within its means so we can tax less. We'll be serious about cutting red tape. We'll be serious about improving our international uh, competitiveness, about growing our productivity more strongly again so we can grow our economy more strongly. We'll be taking uh, some of how's, that. How's can you grow the well, economy? well, I mean, obviously, we will. You, you, you're tempting me now to uh, give you our pre-election uh, economic and fiscal uh, outlook, and, and I will Any, resist that temptation. <laughs> I will resist that temptation because, of course, before we can make final judgments on what uh, can realistically be achieved in the first term, we've got to say what the starting position is, and the starting position uh, will be released independently and objectively by the secretaries of treasury and finance uh, with the pre-election economic okay. and fiscal outlook. We don't okay. trust. We don't trust the budget papers that Wayne Swan has put out there because well, every single single year, That's every outrageous. single year he gets his figures wrong by the, to the tune of about $20 billion. That, uh, well, I was just going to make the point. I mean, you're talking about taxing less. You know, we wanted to cut corporate tax, didn't get it supported by that side of politics. You didn't even put it to you the guys, You guys, you guys, well, you, you, you said it. You said it, you said it, frankly, you wouldn't, you wouldn't support you, you it. You never tried And on top it. of that, never tried what is the idea of putting a levy on th over 3,000 companies to fund your um, paid parental leave, which will be three times what pensioners in my area are saying that they would, would get currently. And on top of that, they want to take money out of the budget and give it straight to polluters in a massive subsidy under direct action. So, please, I'm not going to get lectured by these guys on economics. We might, we might move on now we'll to the... We'll make sure that we'll manufacturing can actually we'll, we'll, yes, yes. Thrive, we might, survive we and We might thrive. move on yes, to our other topic. For all. Now to the ongoing leadership talk, and the Gillard camp appears again to be trying to goad Kevin Rudd into challenging. They say the Prime Minister will not stand aside. We cannot uh, come out of this final week of Parliament with this speculation continuing all the way to the election. I think Kevin Rudd has to decide whether he's a candidate or not and, and then do something about it if he wants to do something about it. The Prime Minister's not going to step down, so the ball's in Kevin Rudd's court, I think. Do you believe you still have the support of your caucus? Absolutely. And do what you do you say to those agitating for a Kevin Rudd return? Oh, we settled all of this in March. Ed, one of your colleagues, Stephen Jones, said this morning the best way to resolve this would be a ballot. Should there be a ballot? Oh, well, look, people will have their views about these things. I think it was good that we had six minutes of policy talk before we got to the issue of uh, what we're discussing now. But, um, uh, you know, frankly, I think, uh, you know, I'm not going to uh, add anything further to what other people may have said today. But, uh, but uh, Greg Combe clearly thinks there's something going on. He says... What Kevin Rudd does need to decide is what he's going to do here, but we can't come out of this final week of Parliament with the speculation continuing until the election. Does something have to happen this week? Well, uh, I would uh, make the point that uh, you know, senior ministers um, uh, can focus on one thing, and that is that uh, we are... You know, people say, oh, we're in, we're in for a tough fight and we're in for all this and that. We've been in a rut for a while, and uh, senior ministers can um, collectively focus on how to put us in a position where we are competitive going into the election and uh, instead of focusing on the internals, get the job done externally. And that's what, what we need to, to see done, see what, what can be done to put us on a trajectory to make us competitive. Why do you think Greg Combe was out this morning saying these things? Who knows, but he can, um, uh, he and others, and uh, like Gary Gray, I said this the other day, um, can focus, uh, focus attention on improving the position of Labor, making it competitive. We're talking about having choice, not having these guys uh, coast along. Uh, my big fear is, and as long, along with a lot of others, is that uh, the opposition gets control of the Senate. The last time they did it, it went to their head and they had work choices, and I don't think anyone can afford to have that again. The, the news poll today showed your primary vote at 29%. Nielsen poll has showed that as well. Do you believe those opinion polls are an accurate reflection of what's going on? And can you win from that position? Can you win with Julia Gillard as well, Prime Minister? I, uh, look, I don't think uh, anyone um, in politics who says to you that they ignore polls or that they're not worth uh, taking stock of, um, you know, frankly, I, I just you know, can't accept that that would be the case. They're indicators of where we're at. Come back to the point I said a few moments ago. We've got a job to do to, uh, to fix the trajectory we're on, to make us competitive and to ensure that people have a viable choice between both uh, sides of politics at the federal election. Uh, one final question on this. Does, does then Mr Rudd have to come out, reiterate publicly what he has said before, that he is not going to challenge, that he no longer is interested in the leadership 
and end the speculation that is going around. What Kevin, uh, others in the Greg, Gary, all of us have to do is focus on presenting a viable uh, set of policies and, uh, and uh, make sure that we are in a frame uh, where we're, uh, you know, there is a choice for people to make uh, come September 14. That's what people should be doing. Instead of focusing uh, on ourselves and internals, make sure that people have a choice. That's what we should be doing. Matthias, while there is all this speculation going on and the media is reporting it, there is not so much pressure on your side of politics to get out your policy. I spoke to your shadow health spokesman, Peter Dutton, last week, who says there will be no health policy out until the election. Given things like health are of such importance to the voters, is it fair on voters to give them only a few short weeks to look at something as important as a health policy? Well, I mean, we've got a government that is deeply dysfunctional, deeply divided. It doesn't really matter uh, whether Julia Gillard or Kevin Rudd is uh, the leader of the Labor Party. Uh, quite frankly, uh, one half of the Labor Party is going to be attacking uh, whoever is in charge, whether that is Julia Gillard or, or Kevin Rudd. Now, but what we're doing, uh, we've been releasing a whole lot of policy in relation to a, a whole series of issues. We'll continue but, but to the release things policy. That, are, that, are, that come up well, time and time again as things of importance to voters, health policy, education policy, are we likely to see either of those except in the in the weeks or days before people vote. We are going through our uh, timetable methodically in a structured way. We're not going to be we're not going to be bullied by anyone into changing our methodical structured timetable. I mean, you know, in in the past people were saying we must see your industrial relations policy. Well, it's out there. We must see your NBN policy. Well, it's out there. Uh, you know, we, we must see this, that, and whatever policy. Well, we, we're going to continue to go down a, a, a proper structured professional process while the Labour Party uh, is tearing each other apart. Uh, we are continuing to put out our alternative plans for a stronger economy uh, and, of course, for a safer, more secure Australia. Ed, is one of the problems with all the speculation that the pressure is not so much on the opposition? Well, I think, uh, you know, uh, what I was sort of bemused is, uh, with is that uh, in uh, days past or months past, we had the opposition say, well, I think you know, Andrew Robb was saying, you know, we have 49 policies already ready, but they've only released a handful. Um, I think we do need to... Uh, have greater scrutiny. I'm, I'm surprised, I'm genuinely surprised I didn't, um, I hadn't uh, caught up with that news that healthcare policy would not be issued until right in the election. Now, you know, I can't see uh, how you could avoid scrutiny on such a major piece of uh, the federal budget. The federal budget, a major piece of the federal budget is healthcare. Most people want to know what's on offer. They did genuinely have worries about Medicare and where it was going when the Howard government was in place last time. Um, and it, it forced the Howard government to change, and I think it's a scandal that they're not prepared to do it until the election. We might leave you now. We're going to have a look at one of the valedictories, but for the moment, Matthias Coleman and Andrew Husick, thank you very much. Thank you. And now to the valedictories from retiring MPs. They're continuing. The former Speaker Harry Jenkins farewelled Parliament earlier today. Liberal MP Barry Hass also said his goodbyes. We'll leave you to ponder just a little of what he said. Good night. I'm told Santa no longer says ho, ho, ho for fear of offending prostitutes. Fairy penguins are now little penguins for fear of offending homosexuals. We have a chalkboard instead of a blackboard for fear of offending the non-Caucasian and children are no longer an ankle biters in case we upset the dog lovers.